G'day friends, welcome to today's video. Now you might be wondering why I popped on so quickly again to do another coloring card video. Well, uh, I was scaling up my production and uh, getting ready to put everything in the store when I realized I was having print quality issues. So this is the cold press paper. This is an option, this is one that actually worked. <laughs> this is one of my samples. This is what happened when I started to try and print, uh, you know, 35 at a time. And uh, it just wasn't working. Now I've spent two days trying to figure it out. I finally figured out what the actual issue is, um, and unfortunately I can't do much to resolve it before uh, these go up in the store, and I don't think it's wise of me to move forward with uh, that res resolution. I'll explain a bit about it. So, um, the cold press. I've been working on trying to find papers that would work for this for so long, and I wanted to have ones that would really work with all of our mixed media. So it had to work with the inks and the watercolors, paint pens, acrylics, gouache, anything that we could throw at it. I really wanted it to stand out because I thought that's what would make it deluxe. Now, the craft I already kind of knew would work because I'd been working with that before. The hot press was new to me and uh, I figured that that would be a really great option for like your markers and uh, because it was smooth. Now it's not completely smooth but it, it has a slight tooth to it um, but I thought you know for your, your more smooth blends I thought inks would look really beautiful on it so um, I got that as you know my smooth option. Now my textured option, I was searching so far and wide because it's really hard to uh, do the printing method that I chose with a textured cardstock. So um, because you're you're missing a lot of the uh, the the grooves. I mean, if you technically if you're looking at the paper, it's like you know the mountains and valleys, and all the valleys, it's really hard to get the ink in there. So I finally found one that had enough texture, but not too much that it wouldn't work. And uh, it was right underneath my nose the whole time. So I don't know why it took me so long, but I, uh, I finally settled on this. Now, the issue I had is that without getting too much into chemistry, basically the paper needs to be conditioned. And this one's more difficult for the printing, so these are the papers that need to be conditioned. When I did my samples, I had about 15 to 20 samples, and all of those papers had been conditioned and uh, were ready to go. And conditioning basically just means prepped, so it had to be prepped in, a, in the right way. These ones were, and they worked out fine. Um, and I didn't have to do much because there was such a small batch. Now, when I tried to, uh, you know, take it from 10 samples to 100 samples, uh, scaling that up was an issue with the conditioning, and not everything uh, was conditioned properly. So then I started getting lots of different um, samples. I would get one like this pop out, and then I would get one like this pop out. And you can see this has got a lot of uh, patchiness, there's a lot of grey areas, uh, lines where the ink didn't pick up. Um, so I just don't feel great having this as an option, and it was ruining so many of the pre-cut cards. So I had to uh, make the executive decision to take this out of the running. Um, the best I can describe it as is if you know you've got some family recipe for cookies, right? And you've got, it's really the difference of, you know, baking it at a certain temperature for a certain time, and the uh, the, the sugar, it has to be the, the right amount of sugar, and you get the family recipe cookies. Now, if you take that and you make that for 12 cookies, you're guaranteed your success because that's the way the recipe was formulated. If you're taking that and you're scaling it up to 1200 cookies, you're going to need to change the ovens that you use or like even the space that you prepare it in. Um, you're going to need to make sure that the batch is evenly distributed uh, if you're making those huge quantities. You could still make it for 12 and do 12 at a time, but it's going to take you so much longer. All that double handling, all, you know, starting the process over and over and over again. Uh, what if you needed to do 1200 in a day? Uh, which is basically my problem. I don't have enough time to condition every single bit of paper and make sure that it's going to work before it goes through the printing. So. This is why I'm super upset because if I had 95 hands, I would absolutely condition every bit of paper. I just don't think it's gonna be the best use of my time to spend days and days and days on end uh, just on this one product. As you know, I've got tons of things that I'm always trying to develop and work on and I always need to be really, really efficient with my time, otherwise certain areas really fall behind. So it's either you know YouTube videos fall behind or uh, responding to messages fall behind or stocking new stuff on Etsy falls behind. Uh, it's such a big juggling act and I'm still just one person. I don't know how many people know that. I keep saying it, but I think <laughs> I think somewhere the message gets a little bit lost and I'm absolutely not trying to whinge about it at all. I love being independent in this, 
but it does mean that I have limitations and I, I hate admitting that. I don't know, it's one of those weird things about myself that I don't love to admit, but um, I, I really did reach my limit here and I couldn't, fi I spent two days on this. I'd pre-filmed my sample videos. They were going up one after the other and I was happy with that. By the time the craft video was going up, I already knew this was an issue. So um, I'm I'm kind of upset because I don't like admitting that I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't feel like a failure because we've still got the white and the craft option available. It's not like any things not going to be available but I really did love the cold press paper just because it was thicker and it had texture it was just a different option so I'm really really sorry to have to take that option out of the mix but what I did want to say to you is these are two hot press options. Now inks work beautifully we've seen that sample. If you're worried that you can't get the same effects on the hot press that you could on the cold press, I'm here to tell you that you'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> um, this is the hot press option, this is the cold press option. I've done both with the designs by Rachel Beth Happy Birthday palette. I believe she just restocked this, so if you've been sleeping on it, uh, set your alarm and wake up, because this is a great palette to play with. All handmade, I've, I've bragged enough about this, I love it. Thank you Mindy Lacefield again for getting me onto that. Um, this is the cold press, this is the hot press. You can still get lovely watercolour textures, you can still uh, even pick up some of the texture and tooth in the paper. Uh, it won't be as severe as this one, and the only real difference is, like, both of these are watercolour papers, right? So they're gonna hold up to a lot of your mediums, if not all of them. This is slightly thicker and has more texture, more tooth, more uh, roughness on the surface. This is exactly the same. It's watercolour paper, it's just slightly thinner, and it has less tooth on the surface. So, you're going to be able to get the same results, and I really don't think it's going to be much of an issue. Uh, I just wanted to have the third option because I thought it'd be fun to play with all different types of paper and, uh, and get you to have that kind of experience that I love to work with in when I'm switching papers up and just, you know, having that kind of a play. So if this is a deal breaker for you, I am so, so sorry again that I took away the cold press option. I, I really wish I could have figured it out, but I just don't think it was going to be the best use of my time to spend days and days and days of energy on this one issue, considering there were still plenty of good options for me to uh, move forward with. So, um, the cold press will no longer be available uh, to purchase. It never really was, <laughs> but it, I'm doing a product recall before it goes out because I already know there's an issue with quality control. So at the end of the day, I'm not too worried about it. Paper is a great place to start, obviously. Uh, having great paper is, is so much nicer to work with, and both of these are great options for this white watercolor cardstock. Um, I've, I've mentioned the differences being so slight, uh, but you can still get great effects. And uh, both, it's just, I mean, I think it's just a matter of personal preference. I've used this for so long, I'm comfortable with it. This has a bit of a learning curve with it uh, for me, but some people out there have been using hot press and would have the same learning curve with cold press. So I'm not gonna say that one is better than the other. I did say that this was my preferred just because I'm so comfortable with it, but having played with this some more, now I'm more comfortable with getting the same results and the same textures and looks over here. So anyway, I hope that clears up a bit of confusion and I hope I've explained myself well enough Again, please forgive me for putting that out there and then uh, not having it available to sell. It uh, really does upset me when I can't bring things to fruition and especially, uh, I think this is the first time I've ever you know, advertised something that won't become available. So this is a learning curve for me as well. I am uh, not super happy about it, but really glad that we still have options. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and for now I'm going to go back to book shipping. Bye.